This video is going to be about the proof of Bell's theorem, but I made another video explaining the significance of Bell's theorem, and I think it would be really helpful to watch that first. So if you haven't watched that video, then click this link to be taken to it. So hopefully nobody who hasn't watched the other video is still here. Remember that what we wanted to prove today is Bell's theorem, that entangled particles communicate to each other faster than light. Before I start on the details of the proof though, I'll explain the main idea. Last video I told you guys about something called spin, and some weird experimental facts about it. I won't show you how, but it is possible to explain spin in the framework of quantum mechanics. However, say we didn't believe that anything could go faster than light. Then, because of EPR, quantum mechanics couldn't be true. Therefore, we'd have to look for an alternative theory where nothing ever acted faster than light. We'll call all theories in this category local theories. What this proof is going to show is that, no matter how cleverly we try, we could never come up with a local theory that could explain spin. We'll do that by a proof by contradiction. In other words, we'll start by believing that it is possible and see what happens. There's one particular experiment with spin we'll try and explain. Let's say I have a source of electrons with entangled spins. This means that if A and B are a pair, if I choose to measure them both in the same axis, one will be up and the other down. Now A and B are sent off to two machines very far away from each other, which we'll call Alice and Bob. Alice and Bob can each measure the spin of their electron in three different axes. These are the three axes, and we choose them so that they are 120 degrees apart from each other. When A arrives at Alice, Alice randomly chooses an axis to measure A's spin in, and Bob does the same thing with B. But they do it independently from each other, so Alice could measure the spin around 2, and Bob around 3, for example. If the machines measure their electron to be spin up, then they flash red, or if it's spin down, they flash white. Someone notes if the two machines have the same colour or not. This experiment is repeated many times. The question is, what fraction of the time will the colours be different? The answer is actually a half, and if you're willing to take my word for it, then you can skip this next part and move on to the most interesting part of the proof. If not, stick around and we'll figure out why that's the case, using the rules of spin from last time. Let's say Alice measured around axis 1, and happen to get spin down. Let's see how likely Bob is to measure spin down as well. The reason I can just pick a particular case like this is because all the other cases will work out in the same way to the same result. One third of the time, Bob will choose axis 1 as well. So since A and B are entangled, Bob's particle will definitely have spin up in that direction, so the colours don't match. What about if Bob measured around axis 2? Because A is down in the first axis, B must be up in the first axis, so we just have to figure out how much of the spin is pointing in the second direction. Actually, as you can see, this vector is partially pointing in the negative direction of axis 2. What does this mean? It means that if you measure the spin in axis 2, it's either going to be up or down, but more likely to be down. So in this case, A and B are more likely than not going to have the same spin, and therefore the colours are likely to be the same. What about axis 3? This is a really similar story to axis 2. As you can see, this vector is pointing in the negative direction of axis 3. So most of the time, B will be down if it's measured in axis 3. So again, Alice and Bob will most likely have the same colour. Let's review those three cases again. If Bob is on axis 1, Alice and Bob definitely won't have the same colour. If Bob is on axis 2 or 3 though, more often than not, Alice and Bob will have the same colour. It works out so that overall there is an exactly 50% chance that Alice and Bob will have the same colour and 50% chance that they won't. Okay, so now we're going to see if a local theory could explain this result. Firstly, let's think about what happens when Alice and Bob happen to pick the same axis. A and B have to have opposite spins in that case. We know that if nothing can go faster than light, the only way that this can happen is if the particles decided what spins they were while they were still in contact. We don't know how they decide who gets which spin, but the awesome thing about this argument is that it doesn't matter. 
All that matters is that each particle, A and B, have decided what their spins are in each of the three directions beforehand. There are eight possibilities. This one is that A is spin up in axis 1 and 3, but spin down in axis 2. Then of course B is the opposite. It would take a while if we had to go through every single possibility, but luckily for me, we don't. We'll just look at the case where A is spin up in axis 1 and 3 and spin down in 2, and the case where A is spin up in every axis. Why can we get away with this? Because we can get all the other cases either by swapping which particle we call A and B, which doesn't matter, or swapping the names of the axis, which also doesn't matter. Convince yourself that that's true. Okay, so let's consider the case where A is all spin up. If so, what's the chance that Alice and Bob will have the same colour? No matter which axis gets picked, A is always up and B is always down, so they're different spins whenever they adopt this plan. What about the other type of plan? This is A's spin in each axis and underneath B's. Alice and Bob randomly pick an axis and there are a few possibilities for what happens. Alice could pick one and then Bob could pick one also, and so they have different colours. Or he could pick two, which means that they'd have the same colour, etc. And we just go through and tally up all nine possibilities and find out that five out of nine times they're different colours. So in other words, if they adopt this plan, they're more likely than not going to have different colours. So that means whether or not A and B pick a plan like this, or they pick a plan of the previous type, they will always be more likely to have the same colour. But as we already know, this isn't the right result. So you see, local theories just don't have the right tools to explain spin. I think that's because spin is a crazy phenomena that is nothing like the classical properties of matter that we're used to. On the other hand, any local theory is quite classical because it assumes particles can't affect each other instantly over distances, which really limits how weird it can be. And in this case, it's just too classical to explain something like spin. So that's Bell's theorem. I promised to cover a couple of topics last time, so I'll work on that, but don't expect them too soon. On that optimistic note, see you next time.